If you know, you it's know. Rich Beans. It's RBZ. It's Kalia. Hello, it's Kaya. It's your boy, Trey B. Carr, a.k.a. Trey. 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 Another one. Another one. We are Team B's. The coolest family in podcasting. Hello and welcome to another episode of Another One. Okay, so we are back again and we're back on our topic, our series. Yes, how to grow a family business. That is our subject for today. It's so ways to grow. Ways how to grow a business, a big one. This should be very interesting. Business is booming. Yes, business will be booming. Business is booming because you have to keep the intention. My business is booming. My business is booming. My business is booming. I say you mean say that <laughs> my business is brewing. Say that five times fast. My business is brewing. Yeah. So listen, you say that right now five times fast. My business is booming. While we take a break. Do you love Team Bees? Do you want other people to know and love Team Bees too? Do you think they're the coolest family in podcasting and on the internet, period? Well, lucky for you, we sell merch, and lots of it. You can buy our merch on teambees.com. That is T-E-A-M-B-Z.com. You can buy sweatshirts, t-shirts, socks, hats, anything. So you can rep Team Bees wherever you go. Hello, Kaya. We out. So we know that you want a big booming business and our intent this week is to help you get there to help you achieve the knowledge necessary to grow a big booming family business hey you know whenever you say b words they always got to come out booming business boost. anyway boost boost, boost your business boost. all right so that's what we're doing and the very first thing to boost your business is knowing your audience. You cannot sell a product or a service to someone and you don't even know who that someone is. Who's the person that wants what you have to offer? The ideal person. Yes, you have to know who that is. Would you sell car seats to teenagers? No. They got a baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that wouldn't be your target market. Your target market would be families. It would or be people starting up, booting up, parents. having babies, new parents, yeah. You wouldn't, tell, you wouldn't tell hubcaps to somebody that has a scooter. Know yeah. your market. Yeah, you have to exactly. know your market, know your audience. So what are some ways that, that people can actually figure out what their audience is? What's their age range? What what um No who how do you, you find no, that? No, how do you find it? Yeah, that? how how do you find So that? that would be what is your product? Yes. Yeah. First like I said from the first episode, know your product. So once you know your product, that'll typically give you some type of area. Now generally there's a couple things that you might not be able to narrow down, like a broom. A lot of people need brooms. Yes, <laughs> but who would you target? If, if if your product... Okay, this week, the product is the broom. Who is the target market for that broom? People it, with houses. People with houses. People with hardwood floors. Okay. Or even carpets. Some people... Some people do sweep the carpet. carpet. Some people do broom their carpets. <laughs> but, but is that just because some people can't afford a vacuum? Mm. Or maybe new homeowners. Or barbershop owners. Okay. okay, so now you get into the business owners. Okay, salons. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So maybe yeah. um, people fresh out of college. Fresh out of college or fresh or into in college? college. Or yeah. fresh into an Can't apartment. Can I tell you how many times I needed a broom? <laughs> oh, see, that's good. So you need a nice dustpan. Dustpan. You need a nice, like, a small sweeper. Yeah, see? And you have it there you go. Easily so now, storable. Now, now that's a variation on the broom, right? 
So that that goes with knowing your product. But sometimes you do have to modify your product to be able to fit the audience. Right. You can do it slightly. You know what I mean? So making a different size broom to fit, you know, storage for someone that's in a dorm room would definitely be something good. Because, I mean, a big broom standing up in the corner, I mean... There's no nothing, in, no place to hide that. You know, you're gonna lay it down underneath the underneath the bunk, <laughs> with, with your foot locker and everything else. I mean, so you know, you gotta know your audience. Know who's who is the person that's gonna purchase your product or use your service. Right. Right. And once you know that, now you get into doing what? Marketing. Marketing. Market. Marketing. Just market all in their face. Once you know your audience, just. Bam, 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 bam. Drop product, the product. Get this the service. Get this service. Yes. Now, what are some ways, some good ways to market a growing family business? The link up with Dynamic Works and they can make your logo, your branding, you know, your advertisements, your video promos your and website. all that. And then, yes, even your website. And then you can just saturate all of social media, you know, at your local library on the poster boards that they be having up out there, you know, mm. even on the streets at different local coffee shops and stuff, all those places. We can make your business cards. You can hand them out to people. Dynamic Works can do all that so that you can market yourself to, you know, reach your goals and make your business booming. Yeah, it's definitely good to get out there at other business fairs and events so that yep. other people can, you know, know your name or if that like, you face. figure out you figure out your market is babies because you make baby clothes, then if there's an event for babies, you probably need to be there because it's a lot of babies and they might need clothes. So That's true. You would go to events that are relevant with your thing whatever that may be so that you can get your name with the people that may potentially end up buying what you're selling now it's interesting that i didn't hear you guys say anything about marketing on social media clear did that you was my that whole was spiel saturate social saturate media. Media. yes i said media. saturate social media well then i must have missed it and i hope you didn't i hope you got what she said so yes you can market on social media. And one of the things that I was going to say would even with going to different coffee shops and uh, library um, bulletin boards and all of those things. If you know your audience, then you have to change your marketing to apply to them. So even though you may mar market said broom, what you would say to someone who is going into a dorm room is different than someone that is buying their first house. Right. You know? And, and it might not be the words per se that you use, but the imagery that you put with those words. Facts. Because what's going to grab their attention? But before, but to even do any of that, you have to know your product. Even be able to market or know your audience. I think, did we talk about this in a previous episode? That was episode one. Boom. So if you haven't listened to that, just go ahead and listen to that. Exactly. Because everything moves together. Exactly. When you know your product and you know your audience, then you can make you, you can go for your goal because you can't go for your goal if you don't know your product and you don't know who your audience is. Exactly. Then you're shooting in the dark. Right. You are the greatest spokesperson for your business. So if you um, don't know your your service or your product well, then you're not going to be able to sell it. And unfortunately, that's going to hinder your growth. So the better you know your product, the better you know your service. And even coming up with, uh, they call it an elevator speech. It's just something quick and simple that you can, um, that hits all the high points of your product or service. And you can share that with anyone anywhere. So you could be talking to somebody in the elevator and you're able to say what your business is enough to catch their attention and have them want to go to your website or have them want to go to your um, social media platform so that they can um, connect with you for your service that you offer even when you're sharing on social media you've got to have something that's quick easy straight to the point because a lot of people aren't going to do a whole bunch of reading right and so you've got to be able to say it quick fast market yourself and know what you're talking about I they're like not to call stammering it, right i like to call it a hook 
like have something that you can hook people with without having to say many words or anything but they get what you're doing and they realize that they need it you have to have that and yes you are the face of your product doesn't mean you have to show your face but it does mean that you are your biggest um, um, advertisement you know so if you have a product and you're selling it you also should be using it because a lot of people will get other um, people to buy it or use it when they see that they use it exactly but when it when it comes to marketing I know that this was um, me for a little bit I wouldn't necessarily want to post about it not because I didn't feel like people wouldn't get the service I just I just didn't post about it and so like people aren't gonna know that you do what you do or that you're selling what you're selling if you don't say anything about it so you just gotta break past that that uh I don't want to call it a fear but that um I guess knock them out the box yeah and Tell people what you're doing. Show people what you're doing because then people can create a connection with you. And whenever something um, comes up that's in your field, like if somebody, if the people know that I am making websites, they're going to automatically think of me when somebody says that they need a website. Oh, I know this girl. I follow her on Instagram and she makes websites. You should hook up with her. I'll send you her information. So putting yourself out there will create more opportunities for you. And you just got to push past that not wanting to tell people stuff. And also, you've got to believe in yourself and what you're doing. Because if you don't believe in it, then how can you expect somebody else to believe in it? If you don't trust yourself to do the job, then how can you expect somebody else to trust you? And I know that... Um, sometimes that can be a bit of a challenge because you feel out of the water, especially if you're first getting started and you're new to um, having a business, you're new to marketing yourself, you're new to networking with people, but you are your biggest cheerleader. And if you cannot cheer for your business, if you cannot cheer for your service, then your expectation can't be that other people will. If you don't post about what you do, how do you expect anybody else to post about what you do? That's a fact. How do you expect anybody to know? Like you said before, I'll like take- I'm a video editor, and then nobody even knows you. They're like, "Oh, really? <laughs> wow, <laughs> cool. didn't know that." <laughs> well, one of the like, I have this little story, right? That um, someone wanted me to install car alarms in a car, right, in different people's cars, and so. My biggest thing that I I said to them was, yeah, I can install an alarm, but first I need to be able to put one in my own car, right? Because I wanted to be able to trust it in my own car because if I mess my car up, then, you know, it's my car Um, and I'll just have to deal with it because I did it. But I wouldn't expect somebody to trust me doing it in their car and I don't have one myself. You know what I mean? One that's working and <laughs> that people can actually see that's working. Right. That's you know? like when I go to a nail salon and I see some nails and your nails look dusty. Oh, wow. I don't want my nails done by you. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, but yeah, I mean, you, you are your, you are a walking billboard for whatever it is that you do. Yeah. Right. And so you have to shout it from the rooftops. And I know sometimes people do have a fear. That is a fear, a fear of, you know, um, whether they're even good enough to do what they're trying to tell people that they do, you know, or not trying to tell people, you know, I don't know whether my stuff is good enough. I see other people's stuff out there and their stuff is better. Their stuff looks, you know, um, I I don't know. It might be, you know, where you might be selling T-shirts and you notice that their T-shirt designs, you know, maybe have this little certain custom tag on it but yours don't so you don't feel like yours is good enough you know um and people may buy your shirt over the other person's shirt because of the fact that it doesn't have a tag that's why they started making tagless tees i think the biggest thing though is fear and fear will keep you from doing so many things right and until you get to the point where you're willing to face the fear and look it in the face and overcome it 
you're not your business isn't going to grow because you're letting fear control your growth and if you look at any market there's other people doing it right (laughs) so whether it's people who create logos whether it's people who um teach yoga whatever it is there are already people in the market and it's just knowing that you've been called to that space and so there is a set of people that are meant for you to create a logo for there is a you know contract that is meant for you to sign for you to to provide a service to whomever and so right. it's being confident in that and stepping over the fear that would prevent you from wanting to tap into whatever it is that you're supposed to do. You got to see past that. And I think that that is the big thing that keeps us from doing a lot of things that are um, on our hearts purpose and purposed for us to do. Right. And like even if it is just something as simple as sharing on social media, we're fearful of what people might think because we do X, Y, and Z. Well, why the heck does it matter? You know, if that's right. what you do. If that's your way of making money, if that's what you know God has has created for you to do, then just do it. It doesn't matter what people think about it. And look, if they don't like it, there's an unfollow button. Well, not only that, if, <laughs> if, if, if that's your if that's your source of income, if you have this business and you're a um, graphic designer, and they're just like, well, you know, I don't want to support her and her graphic design. Well, I mean, it's, it's right. I'm not losing okay. any money because it's of you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, but but don't think that um, you know because you have this business and people aren't supporting you that. Um, you know, I got to go out there and steal somebody else's business either. Like what happens normally is that there's enough business for everyone. So if you have your thing, don't think that you're going to be stealing somebody else, you know, that does that business um, audience, as long as you don't intentionally go trying to steal their audience. I mean, to steal their clients, right? It's one thing for you all to market in the same space. Um, but if somebody is already a client, that doesn't mean you have to go over there and get their client. Let me let me go call them because I know them and they need to be doing business with me. They don't need to be doing business with them. Like, because that energy is going to come back to you. Right. So all you want to do is make sure that you're doing your marketing and keep speaking the things that, you know, um, apply to your product and your service. What are the good benefits about your product? Um, because I would advocate for you guys not to talk bad about somebody else's business because that energy does come back to you. So talk about your benefits. Talk about the things that, um, you know, your product can do for them or their service or your service can do for them. Um, Big up your stuff. Right. Um, But just remember that when you're doing that, you have to maintain a business mindset. Because this is not something that's just, you know, like you're not doing it as a hobby at this point. Like we're on episode three. Like, you know, right now you're building a family, but you're trying to grow your family business. Yeah. Right. And so now you have to have that mindset in your family business that says that we're going to do this professionally. We're going to do this the right way. Oh, yes. That's very true to be professional. That'll grow your business. Great. And if you don't know what professional looks like, Google it. And what I mean by Google, there are are roadmaps, there are YouTube videos, there are business experts and people who have taught business etiquette, all of these things. There are books in your local library that you can get for free. There's no right. reason why you cannot know what professionalism looks like because the resources are numerous and Wonderful. even with with trying to grow your business, don't be afraid to listen to business podcasts. Don't be afraid right. to to buy books, to check out books. Don't be afraid to get a mentor. I think mentorship is so important. And we take for granted the fact that there are people who are knowledgeable in the area that we may want to um, ascend to. And as long as we're trying to 
stay in our own box, then we're limiting our resource and we're limiting mm-hmm. our knowledge and we don't know everything. So no one person knows it all. Even us, we're sharing the nuggets with you, but there's still more that you can learn through other resources. Right. So take what you learn from us, apply it as you can, and then know that there's still more out there that you can, can um, grab from other places that will be helpful in you growing your family business also it's just right. don't be afraid don't be fearful of reaching out because most businesses are a hodgepodge of other business practices so no like you can take a little bit from here take a little bit from there take a little bit from there and do what works for you do what works for your family you know we said that in the previous episode figure out what works and stick to it if you know, you, and not what works for somebody else, but what works for you. Really want to see what professional looks like? Go to your local Chick Fil A. Professionalism <laughs> and customer service—that's the way. They unmatched. are big in customer My service. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Now, the very last thing you know in growing a family business is don't be afraid to spend money. Got to spend money to make money sometimes. That's what they said. You have to put your money where your mouth is, right? Because if you are wanting to grow a family business, advertising costs, marketing costs. And there are ways to to, to get around it, like ways that you won't have to spend much money. But there's usually always still going to be some sort of an investment that you're going to have to put out there to grow your family business. But that's where you stand on your trusting that this is my business and I'm going to do whatever it takes to see this business through, right? I'm going to do whatever it takes to grow it. Now that doesn't mean to go out there and start making it rain everywhere, right? Spending all your monies and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what it is. It's investments, right? So you look for the ways that are going to bring the biggest investment for a reasonable amount of money based on where your business is, right? Now, what they say usually is whatever you make, right, whatever your gross is for your business, 5% of that is supposed to go to advertising. So if you're trying to market, just remember that you're going to probably spend about 5% of your money trying to advertise and making sure that you're being seen in different um, platforms and different um, advertisements through social media, Instagram, um, Facebook, um, um, LinkedIn, um, you know, wherever you can market, right? You may have to spend some money to get it out there. What'd you say? I said exactly. So don't be afraid to do it though. Just know, I mean, you know, Set your budget in place and say, hey, I'm going to put 5% to the side because I'm going to have to market with whatever I have in that 5%. So out of every dollar I make, I need to say, I need to put 5 to the side for marketing, 5 cents to the side for marketing. Okay? So, anything else, guys? Well, I think we no, that pretty much covers on, it all. Yeah, on everything. I think those are some big ways that, you know, you guys can go out right now and start to grow your family business. Right. Of course, there are other ways. These are just things that we thought of and wanted to share with you. Yeah. I mean, we're we're not really writing an ebook with this, you know, so I mean, it's definitely not going to be all inclusive, but these are just some points that you can listen to and put into place today. That's, that's the whole thing with this series is giving you some key points that you can go out and put into place today to grow your family business. So we hope this was helpful for you. We know it was helpful for us. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to talk <laughs> through it, right? You have to talk through it and get it out and, you know, hear yourself say it. Yeah. And then you make those changes in your own business, you know, and all of these uh, all this information and stuff, you know, it's just, it's only us, the coolest family in podcasting. And on the internet, period. Team B. We, we out. out. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Team Bees. To keep the show going, partner with us at teambees.com slash partner. We out.